Hello everyone, this is a course to learn the basics of Python. Today, we are going to learn about Python functions. Let's start with the index of today's lecture. We will learn about the built-in function and user-defined function. First, we will learn about built-in functions. Built-in functions are functions that are provided by default in the Python language without any import. And they are functions that can be used immediately without adding any library. If you look to the left, you can see that length meets one of the built-in functions can be used without import. But as shown in the example, the function SQRT that must be imported from the module will cause an error when used without importing from the library. Don't worry, we'll study more about this next time. You don't have to feel unfamiliar with the built-in function at all. We've already learned some built-in functions. We have learned the input and print functions for communication. Also, we have studied open read functions related to file systems and range functions. This time, let's learn about built-in functions related to calculation. First, absolute is the function which gives absolute value of input real number as its output. As an example, it can be seen that all negative values become positive. The second is the sum function. If you give iterable objects to the sum as an input, it will add all the elements and return it as an output. Third, divide mode is a function which is about division of real number. In the following equation, we know that if the quotient of a over b is q and the remainder is r, the output value of the divide mode is to pure q, r. Thus, divide mode 7, 3 is 2, 1. Finally, the round function is the rounding function. It outputs number rounded to n digits precision after the decimal point. If n digits is omitted, it outputs the nearest integer to its number. Do you remember input function in the previous lecture? In the lecture 5, we have to convert inputted string to integer to treat it as a number. Like this case, there are many cases that we have to change type of variables. First, the type function returns the type of object. For example, type 34 is expressed as int and type 21.6 is expressed as float. Second, type conversion is the process of converting the value of one data type into another data type, which can be considered as type casting. The method is to warp the variable you want to change in the desired data type. As shown in the example, if the string type in str is warped in integer, the type is converted to an integer type. The third is two functions related to real number. First, int returns an integer object constructed from a number of strings. And float returns a floating point number constructed from a number or string. The last one is the boolean value. To represent true or false, Python provides you with the boolean data type. The boolean value has a technical name as bool. The boolean data type has only two values, true and false. When true is returned, it is a real number other than zero or a value of true. Conversely, when false, it is zero or the value of false. So using the boolean function, it returns the boolean value of input. You can also use to find out if a logical value is true or false. This time, we will learn about the ASCII code. The ASCII code is a standard for converting characters and numbers making it convenient to communicate between humans and machines. Back to the built-in function, if you give an integer, the character function returns a character responding to the number in ASCII table. Conversely, given a character, the order function returns an integer corresponding in ASCII table. Iterable is an object which can be looped over and iterated over with the help of a for loop. For example, list, tuple, set, dictionary, string are included here. The list, tuple, and string functions change the input values 
to list tuple and string data types. There are functions using the boolean value and iterable that we learned earlier. First, any function returns true if any element of the iterable is true, or else return false. Second, all function returns true if all elements of the usable are true, or else return false. Third, max function returns the last item. Finally, min function returns the smallest item. Second, we will learn about user-defined functions. User-defined function is a function that we define ourselves to do certain specific tasks. Advantages of user-defined functions is that first, it helps to decompose a large program into small segments, which makes program easy to understand, maintain, and debug. Second, if repeated code occurs in a program, function can be used to include those codes and execute when needed by calling that function. Last, programmers working on large projects can divide the workload by making different functions. First, let's look at the basic form of function definitions. Write the name of the function you want to declare after the EF and add the colon. Then write the contents of the function. At this time, we make a section for function using indication. We already used indentation in previous lecture for in control flow statements. Usually, indentation is consists of four spaces or one tab. Next, let's learn how to call a function. You can call the function by function name, you defined and bracket. This time, let's learn about the return function. Function can return its result value to the main script. Also, you can return multiple values using function. In this case, result is actually returned as a tuple type. As you learned in math class, function is actually requires inputs. And when inputs are given, function calculates it and gives an output. It is same for Python function. You can give inputs by using parameters. The function format is the addition of parameters next to the name. In the example on the right, the function division has two parameters, division and divisor. Lastly, let's solve the practical problem. Let's make our own function that reserves integer number. There can be several answers. We should define our own functions and try to use loop statement to find digit of the given integer by use quotient and remainder. Name the function we want and get the number as a parameter. I define function. Then write a function using that each digit of a number is divided by the square number of 10. I will run function. It outputs 654321. It outputs 321. We can also use some built-in functions to convert number to string and find the length of the string. Likewise, let's declare a function first. Let's transform it into a string using the built-in function str. and print it out from the back of the string. When I run print reverse to function, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it outputs 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is the end of our 7th class of Python. Thanks for watching this video, and if you have any questions, please leave comments.